Welcome to an old cowboy talking about Jesus this morning. Today we're going to talk about Psalm 91 verse 10. It says, God keeps you. God keeps you. You know, it's interesting about Psalm 91. There's 14 or 15 verses there. Interesting story about that. The first three we do. It says, if we believe God that He will and He is, and He takes care of us, then all these things will happen. So what do you are you thinking about? Well, if God cares for us, you remember what how this Bible verse was used when Jesus was here on the face of the earth. Satan appeared to him in Luke, the fourth chapter, and he used this verse that God would station his angels around him. But he misquoted it. But I don't want to misquote it to you today. If you believe that God and you're under the shelter of him, he will take care of you. What you give to God, he is responsible for. In Matthew, it talks about he has, we have, whatever we give to God is that what he does and he cares back to us. So whenever you sow into God, it's like here, it says no evil will befall you. If you're trusting that you're under the shadow of his wings, no evil will befall you. It says you will watch with your eyes and, it, and your eyes will just watch the things around you. It says, it says interesting, if a thousand fall at one hand and 10,000 at the other, you will just look. So God is taking care of his people. Well, how do you know that? Well, in Revelation 12, verse 11, it says Satan is defeated by the word of God and the testimony of the people and they love their lives even unto death. So we realize that we're kept by God because we're under the blood. The covenant between the old covenant and the new, the old covenant was made with the nation of Israel and the law was given so that the people would realize that they were in sin. But the new covenant was given that all the people might come to salvation, that they might come to forgiveness. They might come to the renewing of their mind by the word of God. They might come to know that God wanted us to live in each one of us. In Psalm 91, one of my favorite verses is that very last verse, with long life he has known me and with long life he will satisfy me. So that means that I have a long, long life. So as you began to say that to yourself and you began to realize that, you will be like the, the father Abraham. You know, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which means the father of many nations. So he would go outside and he would look at the stars and he'd go to the seashore and say, oh, he'd tell Sarah, he said, boy, woman, he said, I am the most favored man on the face of the earth. I'm going to be the father of all the nations. And he doesn't even have a son to even say this or even have any, any children or grandchildren or great grandchildren. But yet in his mind, he was saying this. Psalm 91 is like that. David wrote this, that the salvation of the Lord was upon the people and that these evil things and the treachery, deadly pestilence and all the things like cancer and sickness and disease cannot come upon you because the blood of the Lord Jesus is upon you and me. But if you're not saved and born again, you're out from under that covenant that was made. David, David knew what covenant relationship meant. He made a covenant with Jonathan, and we know the whole story about that. Jonathan was, was King Saul's son, and David and, 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 Saul, and Jonathan were good buds. And, and Jonathan had a son named Mishmaleth. Even after Jonathan had died, that covenant meant that David would have to take care of Mishmaleth. So we, and he found him down by Lodibar. So interesting about the things of God. In the covenant relationship that we have in Psalm 91, we are under the blood, and that blood has washed us and cleansed us and made us God's children. So under the covenant relationship, through the shedding of Christ's blood, Jesus' blood, we have been bought with a price. That, that purchase price was the blood and the life of Jesus, and we have been born into the kingdom through that blood and through that covenant. Now, there's a lot of people today on this earth that are trying to go back under the old covenant, trying to walk back under the, the law that, that, that was given to Moses and all those don'ts and don't do this and don't do that. But you and I, if we receive Jesus as Lord, we are not under the old covenant. We are under the new covenant. Now in Hebrews 9, 10, and 11, it tells an interesting story about that. It says, if the old wasn't obsolete and outdated, why did God bring the new? He brought the new. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4, you're going to find that it's been done away with. Because every time Moses or the law or the prophets is read, a veil comes down 
between heaven and earth, between man and God, and puts a, a barrier there, and so you're walking under thou shall not. But Paul gave the revelation in Corinthians there that we have been brought out of that old covenant and we brought into the new covenant. Well, you're going to say, well, you're quoting Psalms this morning. Psalms is God's word teaching us that if we trust in him, we're under his in His bulwark or under his control and under his auspices and under his power and he gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our way so that we don't fall and we don't trip our foot and 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 to do the things that God's called us to do but you don't even have to use Psalm 91 you can go anywhere you want to and see in the new covenant that with long life, everyone who, who repents and receives Jesus as Lord has eternal life from now to the end, ends of time. So we've been brought out of a death life into a new life. And David saw glimpses of this in, in the Psalms that he wrote. And amazingly, what he saw and how forward it, prophetic it was and it is in mine and your life. And so you take God's word and you begin to express that. You begin to speak that. You begin to live that. You begin to understand that. No, just like Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against me will prosper. So you began to speak that when cancer tries to come upon you or a sickness. But you know that Satan has no way into you. If you read John 14, verse 30, Jesus says, come, let us leave this place. He says, the prince of the air is coming, but he has nothing in me. When you live a repentant, wholesome life with God every day, walking in the auspices and the newness of Jesus' life and speaking the Word of God, you will live abundantly and gloriously, victoriously over every situation. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to have trials and tribulations. It means that in every situation, you're going to have the power to overcome it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you must have faith that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So you and I are diligently, constantly, verbally working diligently to seek Him. Now, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest you'd boast about it. So he's telling you and me that we're saved by grace. We're under the favor and the blessings and the mercies of God. So we're open to the things of God. We're listening by our spirit in His, the, the Holy Spirit who's teaching us the way of Jesus. When we are full of Jesus and full of the Word, which are the same, we are walking by the power of the Holy Spirit doing what Jesus said to do. Jesus says, go and do what I'm telling you to do. Under my authority, go and raise the dead. Under my authority, I'm telling you to, the blind eyes will be opened, deaf ears and lepers will be cleansed and cancers will be cast out and the dead are raised and the good news that Jesus loves us unconditionally and that he came to give us eternal life. The Spirit of God is upon me today to tell you by the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit that Jesus loves you and the good news is no matter what, the hope that we have that one one day, from this point forward, we have eternal life with God forever. We will never die. Our whole being is, will be translated and transformed into the kingdom of His dear Son. We have been moved and motivated and operating in the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Psalm 91, he says, no pestilence, nothing will come near you. So when you realize that I have the power through Jesus' blood to rebuke death, I have the power to rebuke the enemy. I have the power to overcome cancer. I have the power to do, my heart is, the, the Lord is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I have the power to call my arteries open, my veins open. I have the, the power to have Christ's mind and the mind of the Spirit. I am full of the Holy Spirit, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of long-suffering, full of the presence of Jesus, walking and doing and saying and being just like He is every minute of every day, thinking about none else but Him. He says, well, you're no worthly good, earthly good or anything. Yes, I am because the power of God rests on me to go and do and to show others about the power of God. Then he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all my needs are met according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I am a victorious victor in him. No longer am I crawling around and groveling in the dirt. As my mind has been renewed, so shall my soul be as I prosper along with my soul. So when I renew my mind daily and I present my body as a living sacrifice, I will have long life and I will operate in the things of God. And I will do these things according to the riches of Jesus' glory up in me. I will walk under the power of that. I will live under the power of that. And I will tell others about it because the good news is to be shared. 
I get tickled with some folks. They, they get a little glimmer of, of the Lord Jesus and then they turn inwardly. They don't want to tell anybody. Let me tell you what this news is to be shouted across the hilltop, across the mountain, from the highest places to the lowest places, into the hospital rooms, into the ICs, into the homeless care, wherever people are, we're to take the, the power of the gospel right into them and to share that good news so that every brother, every sister, every person on the face of the earth, we don't care if they're Russians, they're Greeks, they're British, they're Canadians, they're, they're Australians, they're French, they're Germans, they're, they're Muslims, they're, they're Chinese, they're Japanese, they're Indians, whatever they are and whoever they are. South Africans, they're black, they're brown, they're red, they're yellow, they're white. We don't care. They're the people, they're the children of God and we want to take it to them. The South Americans, the, the children of Latin America, the islands of the earth, the, everywhere we ought to take the good news. And this ministry that, that the Lord has put me in is the good news is to take the good news to every person that will listen. You know, I was just came back not too, too many weeks ago from Peru and I saw hundreds of people saved. Every day people was getting saved. People were getting healed. And God was doing the mighty miraculous things that He wants to do. Why? Because I just want to believe Him. I want to trust Him. I want to stand on His Word. I want to speak His Word with power. I want to see signs, miracles, and wonders. I want to see cancers cast out. I want to see new hearts, new eyes, ears open. I want to see all these things by the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit. And He will teach us the ways of the Lord Glory be to God. He is wonderful. He is awesome. Let the fruit of our lips constantly and continually praise Him and worship Him. Let us see how magnificent the Lord Jesus is. And one day He's coming back soon riding a great magnificent stallion and He will ride up with all His saints and He's going to say, people of the earth, I have come to redeem my body. I've come to share and pick up and do and I'm going to come back in a little while and rule and reign upon this whole earth and you're going to know that you know that you know that you're a child of mine through the confession of your mouth believing in your heart that I was crucified, I was buried, I was resurrected and I gave you my spirit on the day of Pentecost to re redeem and to seal you to the glory of God my Father and he will come and he will show you the ways of himself and he will be in you and around you. He is near to you and when you walk in that power into that presence and that glory you will see that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and you will walk and see. It won't be this old deadbeat good religion thing that people are putting out. You know, Jesus told those Pharisees and Sadducees, he says, you won't enter the kingdom and neither will you let anybody else. There are people on this earth that has a controlling spirit. They have control of the buildings where people go to church to worship and they want to control their every thought and their every movement. Let me tell you something, brother or sister, the ways of the Lord seem right and we should do them. Do not be caught up in this authoritative power struggle that's going on in the face of the earth. Religions and people trying to control people through the religion. Lay that stuff aside and seek the Lord Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the Savior of the world. He is who He says He is. The place where you go is just the place where you go with other believers. Don't let that pastor or that preacher or those deacons or those elders or that busybody that's sitting beside you keep you from worshiping your Father and your God. I did that for 36 years and I looked at the way the people were and how they responded. But I got news for you. I took my eyes off of them and I put them on the Savior. I put them on the Lord and He changed me. He brought me out of what I was. I'm no longer an old sinner saved by grace, but I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the power God rest upon me and in me to do and to be the kind of man that God's called me to do. Every place I set my foot is a place he sent me to go and to share that news. Wherever that is, all across the face of this nation and across the earth, the power of God rest upon this, this ministry to take the gospel to the people. And we're going to do it through any means, electronic, on the TV, on the radio, on the, on the internet, on every, every method that there's known to man, satellites, we're going to use every method known to man to take the gospel to the people. And God's people will provide and the people will be restored and the and their whole resurrection of his life here on this earth will be restored back to this nation and other nations. 
Amen. Thank God. Praise you, Lord. We're walking in the power. This is a time to rejoice. This is a time to be excited. This is a time to lay down all this what if and all the evil that's going on in our nation around the world, the killing and the mayhem and all the, the threats of atomic nuclear weapons and things and all the evil that people are doing. Let me tell you something. Our God reigns and he reigns in my heart and your heart if you'll receive him today. He reigns across the face of the earth wherever. He is near to those who draw near to him. I pray that your heart is being touched. I pray that the spirit of God is manifesting right where you are and tears of joy are flowing down your cheek that whatever you were and whatever you have been in the past that has been laid aside. You're no longer a drunk, an alcoholic, a whore a prostitute. You're no longer a lying person. You're no longer those things. You've been renewed by the renewing of your mind with the word. You've been baptized, baptized into the likeness of Jesus' death. You've been raised to walk in that newness of life. You've been filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit rules and reigns in your life giving Jesus all praise and all glory. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I get to going so fast sometimes. I wonder, Lord, how can I even say this? It's coming to my mind so fast. The things of the Spirit is being unfolded. With long life, He'll satisfy me and you. The reason people are dying short of the maturity of their time is because they allow sin and they allow the cares of the world and deceitfulness, riches, and all the things. And Satan comes to steal the word. But I'm telling you, we are the good seed. We are the good ground. And it's fallen on us. And that seed is the seed of Jesus, the word of his mouth and the words of the Father's mouth upon human flesh, causing human flesh to be renewed, restored, and reset back into the redemption that Jesus has for mankind. Because when sin entered sickness and death and all the cares and all the problems of the earth in. But when Jesus came, he destroyed the works of the devil and brought you and me out of that and gave us eternal life, gave us his life now in this place, on this earth, wherever we are and by whatever the, the dictates of the Spirit upon us. Our, our steps are ordered by the Holy Spirit. We've been moved out of the place of darkness and seated in heavenly places every moment of every day. In the spirit realm, the enemy has no place in me and you. 1 John 5, 18. And the glory of the Lord rests upon every person that's willing and has the gumption and the, the discipline to receive it, to, to be a child of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says, All that are led by the Spirit of God, their sons and daughters of the Most High God. And the creation is crying out, looking for somebody that would believe, would trust and move and motivate and, de and declare the works of the Lord. When you start declaring the works of the Lord, the works of darkness has no place in you. When you start declaring the works of the Lord, you will see signs, miracles and wonders following you. When you declare the works of the Lord, long life you'll be satisfied. No deadly pestilence come near you. The presence of the Lord is upon you you. The power of God rests upon you. To do what? To do the things that God said. Jesus said in John 14 10, he says, if you can't believe in me, do the work, believe in the works that I do and greater shall you do. The greater works that we're doing now is salvation. We can share the good news that out of the depth of us, when we believe on Jesus, out of our very depth will flow a river of living word of the water of the Lord and the presence of the Lord and the power of the Lord. We have received power to go and to do and be witnesses in Samaria, Jerusalem, and to the other bars of the earth. This is what this ministry is about, taking this gospel to the ends of the earth, wherever, whatever motivates us, whatever the Lord says, when he opens a door, we're going to step through it. We're going to step through it and it's going to be paid for in advance. We're not going to do things on the credit. We're not going to beg the people for the money. The power is, is there. The people are going to see and know that when we pray that signs, miracles, and people are going to be healed. Salvation is going to happen. Folks are going to be delivered from drugs and all the sins that they're in, and they're going to walk in that newness of life. God didn't make sin to, on this earth. Satan brought sin on this earth. God made everything to be good and righteous and pure and holy, but Satan d decided to mess everything up. He is a spoiler. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. And he'd best te you'd best tell him to get out of your life by the blood of Jesus and the authority of his name. You need to realize that today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, rejoice and re re repent and receive him as your Lord, as your Savior. Come to the place today where he is awesome in your life. He is powerful, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap call balance as Superman was, able to go from here to wherever in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. The Lord is ready and willing and wants to bless you and me. He wants to have you financially blessed so that you can take that money and bless others and buy for the poor and help the poor and the needy. He wants you to go next door or across the street or to around the nation or to the ends of the earth to tell the good news. He wants to carry it to wherever the, the people are. We're to go. 
Sure, they're in churches, but we were supposed to go outside the church and, reach, and witness to wherever and tell them we're to go in the ICU room, we're to go in the healthcare unit, we're to go in the Alzheimer's unit, we're to go into nursing units, we're to go into hospitals, we're going to the school, wherever there's people, we're to take the good news that Jesus is Lord and King and He came to redeem man from his sins back to Himself and to restore a right relationship, but relationship between man and God. And that right relationship is Jesus, the Son, in us, Christ in us, the anointed Messiah in us by the power of the Spirit of God. When you and I began to operate in this, when we began to walk in this, we will walk upon the water like Peter did because as long as Peter had his eyes upon Jesus, he walked upon the wave. But soon as he looked down and he saw the winds boisterous and the waves roaring up around us, he knew as a, as a sailor and a fisherman, he knew that what he was doing was impossible. But the Word of God says in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible for them that'll believe. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. We know that. We stand on that. We walk in that. The just shall walk by faith. That's me and you. Who's the just? That are those that receive Jesus and they've been justified by the blood. They've been redeemed and made holy and pure and brought into the kingdom. This is the time of great salvation. This is the time of great reflection. This is a time of great renewal and a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. This is a time to rejoice and be glad and to praise God and to worship God. It is a great time to look at the great horizons, the beautiful mountains, the rivers, and all the things around the earth and know that God is God and He's done this, the magnificence of His glory upon man and upon this earth that He might show you and me how great a God He is, how wonderful He is, and the magnificence of his, of his glory upon man. The power in that magnificent glory in working and doing the power in you and me. The things that he wants to do in man. We haven't even scratched the surface in all the other the places outside of the atmosphere that we know. The moon and the stars and all the other uh, beings and all the things that are across the universe. We don't even understand all those things. But we're coming to a place where the Lord is saying, I'm going to show man greater and even beyond his thinking. We have come to a place where there's nothing on the face of the earth that are hidden from man because everything is looking and doing according to God's plan. We can talk across the earth or around the earth. We can travel long distances in short periods of time. We can do all these things because God has given us the understanding and the wisdom how to create these machines, these gadgets to improve life. Everything that God does always improves life, always reestablishes God's relationship back to man, how that He wants to do more in you and me, how He's brought us out of darkness. He says, with long life I'll satisfy you. Those that are under the shadow of the Most High's wing, who, who made the Lord His glory and His refuge. We have walked under the power of Psalm 91. We're walking under the, what David saw thousands of years ago. We're walking into that newness of life that Jesus came, who was the son of David, who said, your, your kingship will never end. And he said, I'm going to put a seed upon the throne in Jerusalem. He has set Jesus as Lord and Savior to rule and reign all over this earth but through the dictates of David's lineage and through the loins, his loins. And he said, Lord, set it my hand until your footstools be made a footstool, your enemies. So he's done this. He is doing it. And he's telling you and I today, repent. Receive the glory of God. Receive the power of God. Receive the presence of God. Come out of that thing that's destroying you. Lay that stuff down and come and be a child of the Most High God. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. Walk in the Word of God. Say who you are in Him. When you begin to say what you believe He is, you will see the manifestation, the operation, and the fullness of the Spirit on every person. And those that do not confess, we know where that place is. It's called hell. And we don't want to go there and we don't want anybody else to go. Are you a reprobate where you're unwilling to repent of your sins and turn from that sin? If you're an airline pilot and you're headed into a thunderstorm, the first thing you're going to do is make a 180, in other words, make a reversal and get the heck out of there because you know there's trouble ahead. I'm telling you people right now, repent. There's trouble ahead for all those that are stiff-necked and will not say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I repent. And I'm talking to Christians, folks. I'm talking to me and you. If we don't walk in a repentant life, we are never going to enter the fullness of the Spirit. We're always going to be outside looking in, wondering why we never got over to the promised land. Go read in the Old Covenant where the po folks wandered around out there for 40 years till they died off. 
But two old guys named Joshua and Caleb says, give me the mountain with the giants on it. Give me the place of the promised land. Give me the land of milk and honey. Well, I'm telling you, it's the new Jerusalem. And I'm telling you right now, the only way you can get there is through Jesus. He says in John 14, 6, he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to God the Father except through me. I pray this sermon has opened your eyes to the glory of God. I pray this sermon has opened your heart to the foundation of believing in Jesus the Lord and receive Him as Lord. I believe right now that there's many people that are listening to this sermon are saying, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And they're going to turn and they're going to do things and be receive that glory and receive that. I know that there's people right there that are want to help get this ministry out and want to get this message out to the people and they're going to help us financially. I know that's happening. I know there's hearts being turned that are dissatisfied with organized religion, dissatisfied with the political situation, dissatisfied with the leadership we have in all these places, dissatisfied with the wars in the Middle East and all across the earth, the dissatisfaction that the enemy has stirred up trouble. But I can tell you right now, when evil prevails, Grace and mercy outsources that and is greater than because our God is greater than anything Satan does, anything man does that's evil. Our God is greater and He's doing a greater work in me and you. I pray that you'll just start turning your life around and just say, the first step is just say, Lord. And when you do that, the awesomeness and the presence of the Lord just says, okay, son, I heard you. I'll help you. I'll take you. I'll wean you off of that dope. I'll wean you off of those things you're doing. I'll wean you off that illicit sex. I will show you a new way. I will take you out of that bondage and I will seat you in heavenly places. I pray right now that you will subscribe to all our daily devotions on PastorJerryBond.com on our social networks. There are many of them. Listen to the radio, listen to the TV, listen to all the ways that we have tried to get the message out to you that Jesus loves you, we love you. There's ways on there that you can subscribe to and hear and listen to daily devotions. There's ways that you can hear the sermons. There's ways you can listen to radio programs. We're telling people about Jesus. We're inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we want you inspired. And I pray that the Lord has touched your heart today. We have telephone numbers in every way you communicate with us any way you want to. And we want to tell you right now that Jesus loves you and He loves me and He loves everyone that will call upon His name. And we just walk in the power and the glory. Amen. Mm -hmm.